Who the fuck did I marry? Uh Fair use permits a party to use copyrighted. Work without the copyright owner permission for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. These purposes only illustrate what might be considered as fair use and are not examples of what will always be considered as fair use. Okay, part 15. Who the fuck did I marry? So in December of 2020, around beginning of December, we had a conversation, kind of a come to Jesus heart to heart conversation. And both of us had grown up in the church and the fact that we were un the fact that we were not married but living together, the fact that almost had a baby together, um, bothered both of us. Both of our families, my family and <laughs> his family, um, were very adamant, like, okay, y'all y'all either need to get married or y'all need to separate. Um and so I'm walking around with a ring on, um, which I'll post a picture of the ring because, God, there's so much to unpack. But anyway, walking around with the ring. And so he said to me, whatever I need to do to do my part to make this work, I'm willing to do. At the same time, it wasn't that I did not trust him as much as it was. I felt like I wasn't trusting myself. Because again, like I said in the previous video, I know what I saw, I know what I read, I know what I've heard, um, but fuck, something was not sitting right with me. And every time I would question it in my head, the other side of me was like, okay, you know he ain't lying about the money, because you saw it. So you know he ain't lying. Girl, are you that, like, I remember saying to myself, are you that jaded that you don't even know what it's like to have a decent man? Yes, I really had the audacity to have that thought. So we agreed at the beginning of December, like, we wanted to be together. I believe I loved him. I believe he loved me. So the decision was made that we were going to get married. It's still COVID, so we had to follow certain protocol. So we filed um, our marriage license in um, Fayette County, Georgia, because I, <laughs> you could not get an appointment in Clayton County to save your life. So we filed the marriage license in Fayette County. On our marriage license, it asked the number of um, previous marriages he said one, I had zero. It asked for our social security numbers. He put his social security number down. I put my social security number down. I mentally wrote down his social security number. And I did a background check. I did a background check after I had filed a marriage license. Yes, I know, but I did. The background check... Um, nothing came back. It was, uh, it was, it was like no results found. Um, I did a criminal background check. Nothing came back. So I thought one of two things, either I had the wrong social, meaning I wrote down the wrong social or my paranoia was unfounded. There's nothing wrong with him because he has been always throughout the relationship, a big stickler about law enforcement um following the law because his dad was a retired police officer so this is someone who has been this is a guy who would check to make sure my tail lights were working make sure my signals were working make sure my oil was good make sure i had enough gas in the car so when the criminal history came back with no results I was like, well, of course there isn't because the man probably hasn't had so much as a speeding ticket. So felt we uh, filed the marriage license and then we made an appointment to get married and waiting for the judge to come out of chambers so that she could marry us. And the reason why I'm pausing is because, my God, if I could go back and see that young woman sitting in that lobby. Wow. 
I know we can't go back in time. But damn, if I could go back in time, I would. I immediately, I didn't tell anyone I was getting married because I was afraid that we had tried before in September and something came up. <laughs> so I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want to get anyone's hopes up. I didn't want to get my hopes up. Um, I know that's bad, but again, said I would be honest, even if it's ugly. Um, I told my mom, my family that we got married, told my friends, they could not believe it. Like they, my mother was, um, relieved, but she had no idea about what was going on. My aunt was more like, really? You married him? My friend, the one who took me to the hospital for the miscarriage was like, I wish you would have told me, like, you deserve to have people there take pictures and celebrate and all this other stuff. Um, and she was like, you know, she's the type of friend, if you like it, I love it. You rock with them, I rock with them. The moment you don't, I don't either. So she was she was supportive. My other girlfriends were happy for me. They just, they just hated that I had to get married during COVID. Because um, they were like, I, we would have loved to have, you know thrown you a bridal shower and a bachelorette party and all of that it just sucks that you couldn't experience that so we got married on a tuesday um on the way home stopped and got some wings went home and i had to get ready to go to work the next day and life i got married january 5th by January 31st, I knew I was in trouble. I still didn't know how deep, but I knew I was in trouble. So, <laughs> to give you all a very, very, very candid idea, got married January 5th. The things that, the normal things that married newlyweds do when we got married, completely stopped and that was not by me you always hear men talk about man now that we're married she don't um in my case it was the exact opposite it was the exact opposite so anyway because <laughs> this is not a, a forum to be all r-rated or whatnot but y'all get what i'm saying so um, we got married January 5th, January 6th. I went to work. It was, <laughs> um, a lot of people congratulated me cause it kind of word got out that I had gotten married January 7th. Um, I filed the paperwork to change my last name. And if you were following me, you can go back like 15, 16 videos. And I talk about how I had to change my name back <laughs> to my maiden name. But I changed my name within about three days of getting married. Um, my attitude was, this is the bed that I made. I'm going to do right by him. I'm going to do right by my marriage. Um, I took marriage seriously. And when I married him, I absolutely married him thinking I'm going to be with you for the next 40, 50 years. So we're going to have to figure this shit out. That was my mindset. I did not get married to turn around and be divorced in six months, but I got married January 5th, 2021. And by January 31st, I knew I was in serious trouble. So be sure to like all. and subscribe the next set of videos. The next set of all this will be um, me talking about how things went downhill before it crashed and I found everything out. In the meantime, tomorrow is my birthday. So happy birthday to me. The fuck did I marry? This is the interlude, basically. Um, I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me.
someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? (sighs) It's a valid question. Um, For me personally, I feel like this was traumatic to experience, to live through. Um, and I will, and I'll expound on that on another video, the aftermath of the toll that this took. Um, honestly, <laughs> and it, be sure to like and subscribe. It crazy. It is kind of cathartic to get this out because I cannot tell you how much of this has been internalized, um, since 2020. Also, I don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter. But to my sisters, to my ladies, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. If something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. If just one woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what? Some don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Um, and I understand all of those reactions. As someone who lived it, Um, it was traumatic, but I feel like, God, it feels good to finally admit, um, what the fuck I went through. And again, by the time this is, uh, uploaded, I'm only to January of 2021, right after getting married. So when I think back on it, there's things that I'm very, very grateful for. Um, There are things that I'm just like, why? Why did you not pay attention? Why did you not question? Um, And the sad part is, I can't even begin to tell you. I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. I don't remember Um, because going through something like that, it changes you. And I've seen some women in the comments who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you, you really don't quite know how bad it can get. Um, So I'm fully aware that this was a risk, putting this out on social media, telling my story, my truth, and really kind of being like, look, this this is what I went through. I made dumb decisions. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. I argued away things I should not have argued away. Um, I can pinpoint exactly the moment I should have left. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. But you hard headed and you went anyway. And then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Like I feel like God did everything to help me as his child be like, this is not who I created to be your your helpmate. And I was like, God, you taking too long. I want to get married. You taking too long. I want to have a family. You taking too long. And these are the consequences that I am paying for basically telling God you took too long. And um, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. It is. But at the same time, and I'm not perfect, I mean, not perfect at all. None of us are. But I do feel like 
when I sit back and I replay the events that happen, I truly cannot believe that was my story. Because all I wanted was to meet a guy for him to be my best friend, for us to get married, have a family. I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead and he make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs. And yet he was my ride or die. Um, I wanted someone that I could be like, man, help me with these kids. And he helped me with the kids. We had a nice home. We were comfortable. That is what I wanted. And I've said this before, And I say it again, I truly thought, I truly hoped it was my turn. You see the women who are, you know, so happy and, um, you know, they're in these loving marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. And so... I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope the next woman who sees this does not excuse because I don't wish this on anybody. I don't wish this on anyone to feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. Um, So I just wanted to say that. Because I think it's important to try to answer the, why is she posting this? Honestly, I was tired of holding it in. I was tired of holding it in. Um, And I hope it helps somebody. Okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Let's all get some sleep. Um, if you don't have anything to do and you just want to wish me a happy birthday, wish me a happy birthday tomorrow, February 15th. Shout out to Team Aquarius. Good night, y'all. <sighs> Part 17, who the fuck did I marry? So for context and just to clarify some stuff going forward, I'm going to now call my ex-husband. I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, So that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex-husband thing. So his name is Legion. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, we got into like a, a routine, basically. I would go to work. He would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. They would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work. I guess he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, So it was it was nothing to kind of. Hmm, that's weird. Um, That's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, And I said this in a previous video, but again, there were things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's going to come back later. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years by the time Legion got into the picture. He was fine with the fact that I worked um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he, um, again, his dad was a retired police officer. So he was perfectly fine 
in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, co-workers. Obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week, he had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again, even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped, um, something just changed. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by 5, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. Um, Really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So... It was never a situation of, oh, I'm going to just sit around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, And then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background, he would have little comments to me. Who was that? Are they in your office? You know, man, you know, I never know who's who's around you because it seemed like every time I call you, I have the hiccup, sorry. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. And I'm just like, you know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off because it really, truly was absurd to me. Um, but then it became a bit more frequent. And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy, never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing Um around two weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio diary on January 21st is the date of the audio diary. And I talk about how maybe I had unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So two weeks pass. He starts making little comments. End of January comes. He informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't you're in the mood to look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, And I remember thinking. That's not like that's not going to work. You're not going to choose a house without me. And he was like, no, I'm not going to choose the house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is Jan- This is the end of January, 2021. 
So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house, I could picture us living there, and then it gets snatched away somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right. Like, I trust you. Um, And remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. So he started looking at houses. <sighs> Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor friend. He, apparently his realtor his realtor friend's name was Scott not to be confused with the other Scott the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients I want to make that clear there were two Scotts one is the realtor who was representing us who said hey I need proof of funds if you don't have those proof of funds I cannot show you any more houses the other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. That's that's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm bringing you out here so you can see it. All right. Now let's go into part 18. Okay, part 18, who the fuck did I marry? So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend, Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, so what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. He would be home every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without fail. It was so, I shouldn't say it was annoying, but it I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock every day that he went to work. Even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I, I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check email. So my boss was like, yeah, you're going to have to come back to the office because you're not trustworthy. And I wasn't. I mean, I totally, I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer. So I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Um, and I was, <laughs> me and another lady were the only two in there because we were the only two who did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So Legion would he started to not come home by four o'clock he started to come home five five thirty six six thirty sometimes seven o'clock because he was saying that he was um looking at houses after work with his friend scott so it definitely was noticed that things are changing um and I just, at this point, kind of emotionally and mentally, I was just like, I don't know what to do. This is the end of January. Remember, I told you in part 15, I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I kind of knew I was in trouble. And by the end of January, sure enough, I knew things were changing in a way that I was like, I hate to sound redundant, but what the fuck is going on? So he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. I had already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Cobb County. Um, <laughs> and then my attitude was kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. The reason why I want, I was so adamant to move 
It was not because of Clayton County. It was not because of the house that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me um, somehow was interested in him. And so she would make these little comments and he would come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. So when I say that it really seems like we got married January 5th and then we had two weeks of peace and then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So he's looking at houses. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. Um, he did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th. So um, he went all out on both days. <sighs> Y'all ain't even going to believe this story. But I said I would share even when it makes me look bad. So the weekend after my birthday. And what I mean by that is if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car. Cause again, we're married at this point. We're talking February, 2021. So I take his car and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure and I get a text message from my husband saying someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. I think it was some, this is through text. I don't know. I think it was some dude you used to mess with. Okay. Um, I was like, what are you talking about? He's, and he was like, I'm telling you, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, talking about they're looking for me? Especially because before I met my husband... I was working I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I had not dealt with dated anything with anyone for about a year before I met him in March of 2020. So I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? So I finished the pedicure, I head home. Once I get home, I'm like, what what are you talking about? What happened? And so I'm frazzled in a way and he's calm he was like yeah it was a black dodge charger they pulled into the driveway they backed in they backed in as if they had been here before so clearly this was someone who who who's been to your house he got out the car he said i opened the door and i went out there and i said you know is there something i can help you with and he said the guy said i'm looking for and gave him my name and he said i'm sorry she's not here and he said, he was like, oh, okay. Um, all right then. And just got in a car and drove off. And I was like, my brain stopped working because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, was it the sheriff's office trying to serve me with a lawsuit for a credit card I didn't pay? He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. And so I'm just like, who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? He was like, I think it was your ex. I said, what ex? He was like, the one that you had dated for two years. 
Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now fast forward to February, 2021. And he's telling me, yeah, I think it was the ex that you had been dealing with for those two years before you met me. I said, so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years? And he was like, well, whoever it was clearly was comfortable pull backing into our driveway, getting out the car and was like, I'm here to see and gave me, gave him my name. Um, and so he was like, she's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, nah, nah, it's cool. Um, and then just got in the car and drove off. So uh, again, brain is like, who, who could this be? So then Legion says to me, you know what? The way that you react into this is real suspect. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what are you, what have you been up to? Now, let's go to part 19. Okay, part 18, who the fuck did I marry? So he says to me, the way you're acting is real suspect because I told you it was fine. I took care of it. He was like, I ain't even worried about it. He was like, obviously that nigga didn't know that you now married, that you've moved on. And so now he knows it. But for me, it was the fact that I don't do dry, I don't do pop-ups. Don't come to my house unannounced. So if someone has done that, for me, it it automatically feels like a violation and it feels like it needs to be addressed. So it was not as simple as I already took care of it. It's fine. Let it go. No, nah, we ain't letting nothing go because you don't have my permission to show up to my house. And before this turns into something where I'm going to be on Fox 5 News, I need to address that with you because that is not okay. So he didn't like the reaction I had to the story he told me where someone basically disrespected my home and he felt like my reaction was really suspect. So, um, what I'm going to, I'm going to get into the little details that he did not know about. So he tells me again, it was a black charger, a black Dodge charger. They backed into the driveway a gentleman got out of the car and he asked for me by name and Legion said, she's not here. So, um, I asked him, what does the guy look like? And he said, he was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well, um, he was shorter than me ex-husband is about six three six four he was shorter than me um he was brown skin I said did he, ha- did he have a hat on his head mind you I understand that before marriage I was a damn fool I understand that but every woman has that moment where you only gonna fool her but for so long and eventually stuff puzzles start coming together. For me, I felt like moving into marriage, certain things started coming together. So I said to him, um, did he have a hat on his head? He was like, nah, he ain't wear a hat. So in my mind, I am mentally going down a list of every possible man it could be. Um, And it was only like four men. I had been in that house about three or four years at this point. So I knew all of the people. And I'm talking about from maintenance down to ex-boyfriends. It was a total of like four men. So when he said that um, it was a black charger, I immediately was like, okay, I know that crosses out one. He said he was shorter than him. All of them were shorter than him. I said, did he have a hat on his head? He said, no, that crossed out one because one in particular was a maintenance guy who always wore a hat on his head because he had like a bruise or something and he he was just self-conscious about it. So he always wore a hat. That leaves two. 
So I said, was he muscular or was he skinny? So Legion's getting all frustrated. I said, just answer the question. He was like, well, he was kind of in between. And I said, okay, um, he, he was in between. I said, so was he light skin or was he dark skin? He was like, I told you he was brown skin. I said, was he my complexion? He said, no, he was, he was brown skin. That eliminates one. So now there's one left. And yes, the one left would have been the ex that I had dated for two years. And so he was like, I know that that, I know it was your ex. I know it was your ex. And I was like, that don't make no sense because the ex that I, in my mind, I'm saying this, the ex that I had dated, he and I had no contact with each other. And he was not the type to just pop up at your house. That ain't his style. Not to mention, and I ain't tell Legion this, that man would not be caught dead driving a Dodge Charger. He hated Chargers because he drove it as a patrol car. So I didn't say anything. I just was like, that's that's weird. So what Legion didn't know is that at the time I had a security system. So I had a security system where um, anytime the front door, the garage door or the back door was open, basically any entry point, anytime it was open or closed, it would send me a text message notification. So when he's telling me all this, I'm looking at my phone and I see a notification where the front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So for example, if it says front door open at 1 p.m., front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. He's telling me the story of the guy got out the car um, he opened the door. He went out there. Can I help you? And the guy said, um, I'm looking for, and Legion said, no, nah, she's not here. And so the, he said, the guy kind of was like, okay. And he was like, all right, thank you. And got in the car and drove off. Legion has also told me that he watched him drive off, drive out of the neighborhood which means because of the way the house was set up, the townhouse, he would have still been outside watching this. I could be wrong, but something in me was like, that would take more than 60 seconds. So for the door to have been open and shut within the same 60 seconds, I was like, mm, mm. okay. So also what he didn't know, we didn't have a ring door camera, but my neighbor did. And her ring door camera caught my driveway. It, it The view of the camera could see my driveway as well as her driveway. Um, and so who, whoever was coming in the door, our driveways were right next to each other. And then on the either on the other side of it was the grass. So it was a per, it was a perfect view of my driveway. So. So she um, I had text her and I said, hey, were you home? Um, I think I texted her the next day because I said, were you home on Saturday? Da, 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 da. And she said, um, no, I wasn't. What's up? You know, everything good. And I said, um, can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house um, at such and such time? And I know I, I did not tell her the reason I was asking, but I was like, is there any way that your security camera caught if someone came to my house um, at this time on Saturday? She's like, yeah, sure, I'll look. And so maybe about a couple of hours later, she texted me back and said, hey, I looked at the camera, but I didn't see anything. And I said, okay, by any chance, did it catch if someone maybe walked up the driveway? Like maybe it wasn't a car in the driveway, but someone walked up. She said, I didn't see anything with your driveway yesterday. So I said, okay. Um, and I, and I knew, I knew that something in me again, um, was like, nobody came to the house. So now here we are, um, a month and a half married. And now is when I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because no one came to the house. No black charger came to the house, pulled back into the driveway. Nobody got out the car and asked for me. 
Nobody was looking for me. So now I'm, I was sitting in the bedroom thinking through all this and I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because that's what happened. I'm looking at the text messages on my phone where he's telling me someone just came to the house looking for you, but no one came. So what was the purpose of that? And then I, and then something said to me, something in me said, he wanted to see your reaction. He, he just wanted to see the reaction. You had been too calm. And so he wanted to see a reaction. So this man gaslit me like I was Georgia natural gas just to get a reaction. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part 20 of who the fuck did I marry?